I currently coach in Norwich at the University of East Anglia and I coach the men's first and women's first teams. Um, I would say just generally my basketball like build up in life would be my parents. Uh, they've supported me a lot through most of my playing and my coaching career. Um, my partner Amy influences me and pushes me behind the scenes to be the best I can and be. Um, regional coaches, uh, sort of Matt Harvey, he's been a big influence um, to sort of push me from being a player through to being a coach. Um, and I'd say the um, Federation of Basketball England and Brian, um, they've been a big influence and helped me uh, sort of as, a, as a young coach and as a female coach, uh, give me some opportunities which I would have never thought I would have been able to have. I think the transition between being a player, so when I was at university, um, I sort of sort of dropped out of playing, sort of a little bit of the love of the game and thought of different avenues of then continuing. Um, and then I sort of went into a little bit of community coaching when I was at university and it sort of built, built up from there. Um, and then when I moved to Norwich, it sort of became a much bigger influence in my life than the decision that I made. So yes, yeah, a good decision overall. I would say just juggling everything. I think obviously I really want to pursue my coaching, but unfortunately at the minute I don't have the opportunity um, to do that full time. So I think being able to juggle that with my full time role, family, friends, having a bit of downtime, but also wanting to pursue my goals and having the t make, making me make the time to do that um, and having it all of the whole picture. And that's my biggest personal challenge, um, putting everything in that I want to do in a week and in a year is a challenge, but I'm sure that everyone has. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the biggest challenge at the moment. I would say in my first like proper year of coaching, so I coached an under 14 team and it was their first time of reaching the National League playoffs. Um, and the club had never reached playoffs before, so it was, the club didn't even really expect to, to make the playoffs. And then we actually won our first playoff game in overtime by one. Um, so that was a pretty awesome experience. And leading that group of girls who had never even thought about getting to playoffs or this, the league outside of anything else. So that was definitely a proud moment as a coach um, and being part of the club as well. I would say through being a player previously, I think being able to relate to the players a little bit from that aspect, knowing sort of sometimes, especially coaching at the minute, university students, having been in their shoes not so long ago um, and being able to relate to them and sort of implement some things that I struggled with at university and being a player. Um, and then through that probably linked with that um, closely is communication. So communicating with them both on and off the court and um, supporting them. I mean, the, the challenge from moving to university as well is not always coaching, but so, sort of that personal element. Um, and obviously being professional and being a coach, but also being a bit more personal with it as well. I feel like I've it's really opened my mind up to a lot of things and I feel like in a lot of different elements I've progressed a lot already in a really short time. Um, I think having my eyes open to sort of a lot of different platforms and also linking with a lot of different people and really opening up my network. Um, I think I know, knew a lot of people in basketball already but actually connecting with them on a, on a personal level and building myself up and using almost using them to my advantage and speaking to them about coaching that I would have never done previously. Um, obviously there's a lot of people on the programme and being interacting with those other female leaders is a fantastic opportunity and it's been great to have um, a lot of conversation with them already and it's exciting what we've got planned for the future. Um, also having um, that mental element is amazing and um, having um, Troy as my mentor so far has been great to connect with him a, a few times um, and I've done some things with him that I've again never thought of doing so it's it's really exciting to also in the future be able to put those on, on the court which unfortunately the minute we obviously can't do um, but I really just want to every time I have a conversation it just makes me want to get on the court and put some things into practice so yeah it's been fantastic so far and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the programme. I would say the biggest piece of advice is just take every opportunity that's given to you and try and create those opportunities for yourself. Like, don't be scared. Um, it is quite daunting and 
you might be scared about doing certain things, but there are people out there to support you and um, reach out to people and th they're not going to turn, turn you away. Lots, basketball's a small community and everyone wants to help, help each other. Um, I think especially being in sort of a, set, a location in sort of Norwich, I've sort of built a community a network around myself and not move into somewhere that I never knew anybody but basketball has allowed me to create those friendships and networks um, so yeah to do that and just not not be scared really of making a mistake um, and you, you're gonna get somewhere like if, if you've got this determination um, and, and sort of the morals within the game you're gonna get somewhere so yeah just, just keep pushing forward I would say, especially for young players, is that like mental toughness. Um, it's, a, it's a hard, obviously, is it a, a skill you can teach? Potentially there's an argument there, but I, I think building players up to have that decisiveness and knowing to be tough, especially at the end of the games. Um, there's a lot of things that are thrown at players. Again, my environment, coaching the university, there's a lot of external factors bringing up, and some people have to bring them on the court and it's, it's difficult. So having to speak to them and, sort of mentor them on and off the court to to build their me uh, mental toughness up it, it is a challenge and it is hard so it's definitely something that I'm learning as a coach of how to do um, and also working more with my players to do that too. I would say at the minute I'm reading the Barcelona Way which is written by Damien Hughes and he's also on the high performance podcast of Jake Humphreys um, and sort of linking with that I think that for any coach it's not to always think you have to read books I think as a personally I mean the time aspect I don't always have time to read books so it's always something that is on my list to do and obviously in today's world podcast is something that's really been pushed um, so I think that 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 podcast I've sort of got into over the COVID period and it's got some really good people on it and um, sort of Steph Horton um, Tracy Neville so d different people that you might not think is in your sport and there's different entrepreneurs on there as well so yeah something that I would open up to be perceptive to too. I was refer refereeing a game one time and just a massive fight broke out that was entertaining that was just interesting and <laughs> yeah there's, there's wow. lots of different things I've seen but I think that's probably one of the craziest ones. I would say as a female role model um, who influences their players both on and off the court and it's almost like the human themselves, not just the player. Um, and yeah, building on multiple different aspects of the game, just maybe not just focusing on players, but encouraging females within all aspects of the game. I personally use a whistle most of the time, but I would say it's the, the environment that you're in. Because we're coaching men a lot, I struggle to speak, shout over them. Um, but yeah, I would say whistle at the moment. <laughs>